barren land. Amen. Amen. We have another home not made by man's hands. Amen. Amen. I can't wait to get to that home. Amen. Thank you, Judah. Praise to the AV staff. All children are dismissed. Amen. All children, thank you. Teachers will do a wonderful job with our children. Amen. Amen. We're so grateful. Yes. Amen. Amen. Please remember next week uh, we will baptize two of our darling daughters. Amen. 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 Two of them. Vanessa Banks. Amen. And Miss Ruby Williams. Amen. Amen. Ruby is all back and I'm back in church. Amen. 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 I'll never forget what she asked me in the study. They, they wanted, she wanted to know, can they both be baptized, Cheryl, at the same time? <laughs> How about we just put their sisters like that? That's Melvin and Louise. They both can hang out like that. <laughs> Amen. And June is the third wheel of that tricycle. Amen. They're some tough sisters right there. Amen. Amen. So please be a prayer for the family. Be a prayer for them. Uh, and please uh, be here at 10 a.m. Shut up. We try. Amen. Or then I should have said left. Because <laughs> that's CP time, praise. We're going to take the time, Steve. Amen. Amen. We just praise God for our teachers, for our children. Uh, I don't know. We, we do not have the internet, so we are going to do our best. Uh, amen. 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 With what we do have, yes, they, they're saying thumbs up. Is that right? Some. They start praying. <laughs> oh, <we're> <laughs> I know. I'm still simple. Still simple. Amen. But we like to have a good time on the board. Amen. We greet everyone. Would you kind of stand to receive this word um, from God? And I'm going to try to operate my phone and, and this iPad, and we just going to have a good time in the Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, I remember well, some years ago. Come on. I'll tell you how long ago I've been in ministry. They didn't have internet. Mm -hmm. We used to have our, our notes, Nancy, on a paper. On a legal, a legal pad about that being, and, and if they turned the fans on, and the fans were your notes. <laughs> you had to be prepared and committed to memory. So I'm, I'm used to Robbie the second with no internet. And we still had church. Amen. They still Amen. preach the word. Amen. People still got saved. Amen. Backsliders still got reclaimed. Amen. Somebody found a church home all without the internet. Amen. 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 So we're not going to let Satan stop us from doing what God called us to do this morning. Turn your attention to a familiar passage to uh, John, the 21st chapter, and just three verses. The 15th through the 17th, John, the 21st chapter, verses 15 through 17. One more time for the Holy Ghost. John, the 21st chapter, verses 15 through 17. And from the King James Version reads these words. So, when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, Son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time. No, Jesus is not stuttering. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved, because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. You may be seated Amen. in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Judah. Praise. 
back home and years ago, they say that there was one of my favorite right hymns. <laughs> we be singing that all the time. So building has a leak. I gotta move. Thank you for lifting up those songs to Derek and to Cherie and to Sandy and Mom Methel and to Jahari and Hillary and Avi staff. Thank you all so much for helping us get through this moment. When I got here, Jahari said, I can't shut the alarm off. And it was blaring. I thought Reynoldsburg and SWAT were going to roll up here any minute, Jay. And I said, it's going to be this kind of day, Lord. <laughs> Somebody almost hit me. Deer running me off the road. Wow. AV equipment won't work. That's all right. Alarm going off. Yeah, well, we're still here. That's all right. But we still, somebody took me out my mouth, we still here. That's right. Amen. We still have an opportunity Amen. to praise him. So pray with us as we go through this uh, uh, unusual moment, but it is one God who's ordained. I know from last week, Dr. Barry, if he fixed that moment. That's right. This is minor to him. Amen. Amen. Because we serve an on time God. That's right. I want to talk from the subject resurrection from the past. Resurrection from the past. One more time. Resurrection from the past. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name and your spirit. We thank you now for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. Our prayer, God, is that our preparation and this proclamation will be pleasing in your sight. We pray, God, that you get glory as you have from the songs that have been sung, from the fellowship, and from even the scripture that has read, and now your word. We know, God, that you declare that once it goes forth, it shall not return unto you void. Mm -hmm. It will accomplish that which you sent it out to do. Amen. God, for someone here who is outside of the ark of safety, who never said yes to Jesus, who never claimed him as their savior, who never surrendered their will, who never submitted to your will, and who has never sacrificed time, talent, temple and treasure, we pray your spirit would walk them down the aisles. Yes, Lord. And they declared, sir, what must I do to be saved? For the backslider, reclaim them as well. That you've never lost love for them. That you've never moved, God. We simply have. And now we've come back and you've received us again. To those who may be looking for a church home, God, have that decision and that answer ready when the time calls. We promise, God, to embrace them where they are, to equip them with your love, and to encourage them along the way. It's in Jesus' name that you hide us behind your cross. Keep us under the dripping of your blood. Across our minds and our heart, write these words that are found in the gospel according to John, the 12th chapter, and the 21st verse. Sir, we would see Jesus. It's him that we've come to see this morning. And for his sake we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Uh, Jordina is not uh, 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 no stretch of the imagination, uh, uh, Jay Williams, uh, nor Nisi is it a giant leap of faith. Uh, to state this truth. All of us have a past. That's right. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. All of us have a past. To bring along with that truth, Mom Ethel, here is another truth that doesn't require Shikoko a lot of thought. All of us have been hurt by someone from our past. Amen. All right, let me flip the coin. Another truth is that all of us have hurt someone else. That's right. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. From our past. It could have been just yesterday. It could have been one week ago. 
It could have been Sean a month ago. Brandon, it could have been six months ago. Church, it could have been a year ago. It even could have been just this morning. This is the truth. At some point and at some place, we all have been hurt. It could have been a little hurt. Minor to those who hurt us, but major to us because it still hurts. It may have been major to us and, 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 and unintentional to those that we hurt, or, or it was intentional, but the design was to inflict pain. Whatever degree of minor or major church, it still hurts. But there is still another truth this morning that comes from the other side of the coin. We need to be honest. We need to be transparent and crystal clear. At some point and at some place in our path, past, all of us have hurt someone we know. Amen. Another truth about being hurt is this. We all carry scars yes, mm -hmm. that have come from relationships that hurt us. Yes. Scars are a mark left on the skin or within body tissue where a wound, burn, or sore has not healed completely and frivolous uh, connection tissue has developed. A hurt has left a scar is a reminder of our past that someone or something has happened to us and we need to deal with it in a proper manner if we're going to be healed and if we're going to be made whole again. That's right. Come but on. the hurt and the scars have been around, Sandy, a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not new. And they are present as well as they are in the past. Now, I don't know what Jahari has, but let me see if I can get my phone to pop up my definition of past. She's on it. Hallelujah. I should have known better. That's the comeback kid back then. <laughs> a time going past to define our past uh, having existed and our having occurred during a time previous to the present bygone beyond a time ago. The synonyms uh, are as follow. Uh, elseworld, elsewhile, willem, former, late, once, one time. You got them up there. Amen. Other, quantum, and over. Amen. 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 So we praise God for that. Those are the synonyms, but here are uh, quotes that we've got, seven quotes, amen, that we have. If you can see that writing, and I'll read from my phone, uh, follow along with me. Don't regret the past. That's right. Just regret the time wasted with the wrong people. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Don't regret the past, just regret the time wasted with the wrong people. Amen. Forget what hurt you in the past, but never forget what it taught you. Amen. Amen. We're going somewhere with this train, just stay on board. Number next, when your past calls, don't answer. Come on. It has nothing to say. When your past calls, don't answer. It has nothing to say. Right. Number four, you can't go back and change the past, so look to the future and don't make the same mistake twice. Amen. 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 All right, here we go. Number next, five, the best thing about the past, it shows you what not and who not to bring with you into the future. I like that one. Amen. It shows you what not and who not to bring with you in the future. Being stuck in the past is like walking forward with your back facing the front. You will always miss out on what's in front of you. Yes. Number last, when you hear people uh, from your past speak of you, keep in mind they're speaking of a person they don't know anymore. Mm. Amen. Come on. I like that one. They like that too. Yeah, they're speaking of a person they don't know anymore. So let me go into our text and got a little bit of time. So watch this. The Bible says uh, in 21, 1, uh, after, or 1A, after these things. I want to go back and look at Jesus talking about after these things. Find a neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. 
Yeah. He's going to talk about after these things. Find another neighbor and say, neighbor. Whoa, neighbor. He's going to talk about after these things. All right. I know you're awake now. All right. After these things. And, and so number one, these things relate to uh, uh, an empty tomb. <laughs> Uh, the first of uh, uh, these things is an empty tomb, and, and, and when Mary goes looking for Jesus to anoint his body, she finds an empty tomb. And, and sometimes I've learned in life, church, that you can't go looking for what you believe is dead, prepared to give it its proper burial, and you'll find that God has already brought it back to life. All right, maybe I said too much too fast. <laughs> yeah. The tomb is empty. And so here is something that I gathered from this point that will make you swim in your seat or turn uh, and do a somersault. Watch this. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. This is these things. Mm -hmm. Having read this text for the last 30 years, J. Williams or so, it appears, Nisi, that God desired to show us something we may have never paid attention to. I need you to listen to what I'm about to say to you. I know this is where in the scripture, uh, 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 you know, women, uh, uh, some women will go off and see pastor, preacher, deacon, doctor. Here's a point where Jesus says women are allowed to preach. Mm. Come on, preacher. Come on. Because it was a woman who first got the word and was told to go tell. Come on, come on. I, I'm good with that. I don't have no problem with women preaching. As long as Jesus is speaking to them. Yes. And that's who they preaching. Amen. But this text, Russell, caught my attention because it says to me something deeper as I was driving on the road yesterday and kept mulling over this point, Dr. Barry. It's much more than women being the first ones to be sent by Jesus to preach. Jesus says, go tell your brethren that I was sending unto my father and your father and to my God and to your God. And what Jesus is saying, my first point, is that the relationship is still intact. Amen. Amen. Even though you see an empty tomb, Mary, he's still your God and he's still my God. Yes. He, was, he was telling her to tell them we are still family. Mm. Mm. Sister Slade rolled through my mind. We are family. I got all my Jesus with me. Yeah. We are family. Yeah. I got all my Jesus with me. But I see something else here that hasn't been noticed for 30 years in my life of studying the Word of God. Watch this, Mom, Betty. God took me back to the past and placed me in Genesis in the garden. Don't miss this. He said, look, son, if the woman was deceived, if the woman was tricked, if the woman was fooled and beguiled by the devil back in the past, don't you think it's about time I settled the score and told a woman that the deliverer, oh, Lord Come Jesus. on. In this garden? Yeah. Did you ever see that in the text? That even though Jesus is our deliverer in this garden, the woman dealt with the deceiver in that garden. God says, let me even the score and give a deliverer in this garden. Amen. And the woman was the first one he told, just like she was the one who Satan deceived. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Ha! <laughs> why shouldn't God set it straight? Come on. If she was fooled in that garden, why shouldn't she be told the truth in this garden? Yeah. If Satan got the best of her in that garden, why shouldn't the Savior tell her the best in this? Oh, I feel like. Woo! Don't miss that. We're talking about resurrection from the past. I don't miss that. That stuck with me all day and all night. If Satan fooled her in that garden, why shouldn't the Savior tell her the truth in this thing? Come on. Ah. Come on. Did you ever see that in the text? I haven't. For 30 years, I've been looking at that same text and wondering if God would ever set the, set the record straight. He set the past straight because she was fooled back then, but the truth is told right now. Amen. 
closer to our text. I'm, I'm, I, I can shout and go home right now. Go ahead. Somebody say, let's go. <laughs> that hand won't be all right. That tater salad ain't went nowhere. Chicken still frying. Closer to our text. Jesus appears to the ten disciples. And something about Derek did this morning that caught my attention about this sermon, uh, Derek, and the reason why I stared at you and laughed, uh, because you couldn't come through the door, uh, because we had it locked on that side. Well, in our text in 19 through 23 in the 20th chapter, Jesus walks through a shut door. Yeah. 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 Not only does he walk through the shut door, he walks into the fear. That his disciples say, oh, I feel like preaching. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jesus will walk through your shut door and your fear. And the word says he stood in the midst and he brings peace. Has there ever been anybody in this room with a shut door and fear and Jesus walked in and brought peace? Oh, I feel like preaching. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead, tell it. Not only does he walk through the shut door calms their fear and offers peace. Yes. Mm -hmm. He shows them the scars in his hands yes. and in his side. Yes. But he doesn't talk about abandoning them. Mm. He's not talking about leaving him alone. He's not talking about y'all left me to suffer. Mm. He's not talking about the shame and the humiliation. Uh, he's talking about I am going to bring you peace. He says the peace be unto you as my father has sent me so even I send you. Even though they left him and parted themselves from Jesus, Jesus breathes on them. And that caught me in the text, Kim. Jesus, it's the 19 and 23 and the 20th chapter. I wanted to know what did he do? Did he slobber on them? Did he spit on them? The word says he breathed on him. And to breathe on him in this context means that Jesus pledges to receive, that they should receive the Holy Ghost. He offers a promise through the pledge that the Holy Spirit will come and equip them for the days ahead. Yes. He's telling the disciples they can declare uh, with certainty uh, of, of their forgiveness that the Father has forgiven them, forgiven them and the work of his Son to repent and believe is the good news. But Jesus is dealing with their past and this is their resurrection from the pogromistus. This is their resurrection. Oh, uh, come on, okay. From their past. Yes. Uh, I'm warming up. Next door to our text. Two doors, matter of fact. Thomas sees Jesus. Is the caption. The door is shut. The fear is diminished. But doubt needed to be dealt with. Come on, come on. Jesus wants to deal with Thomas's doubt. Y'all know the story. Thomas says, unless I see him, yes. unless I put my fingers in his side, mm. unless I feel his hands, then I believe. Amen. If there's anybody here from Missouri, <laughs> show me, show me. <laughs> the show me state, yes. unless I see pastor, I won't believe. Unless I put my hands in his hands and feel the scars and the print, unless I put my fingers in his side, I won't believe. And Jesus comes in the midst with the door shut, fear is diminished, and doubt still reigning. Is there anybody here who's been in this position and Jesus says, touch me and know that I am here? Right. Come on. Yes. 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 Reach your finger here. Touch my hands and thrust them into my side. Feel my scars. This is the resurrection from the past. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples. Next to our text. Watch this. They went back to their old lifestyle. Hmm. Peter said, we going fishing. Sometimes, church, salvation to some folks seem like it's a momentary thing. Mm -hmm. They get it on Sunday from 10 to 12 and they go back to their lifestyle. Amen. The way they used to do things. 
And while they were waiting for the promise of the Holy Ghost, Peter says, we're going fishing. They were fishermen by trade. The word declares that they fished all night and caught nothing. Some of us know what that's like to be up all night. Yeah. <laughs> fishing for an answer. Yeah. And catch nothing. That's right. Or I'm by myself. You had some nights and I've had some nights. We tossed and we turned. And all that wound up to be here was just a sleepless night. Because when we woke up, finally after we slept for two minutes, the problem was still there. Amen. But when morning comes, the Bible says that Jesus is standing on the shore. He said unto them, listen what he says, children, have you any meat? They answered him and said, no, they didn't even know who he was. You're just talking to a stranger. You just <laughs> now nah, we ain't but see you're so fixated on your problem, you talk to anyone. Come on. Come on, Reverend. Come on, Reverend. Come on, I'm coming down the street. Stay with me. Come on, Reverend. Uh, he says, You have any meat? They answered him and said, No, Jesus provides instruction. And John recognizes that it's the Lord. Peter, half naked, changed his fishing garb and just jumped in the water and starts swimming towards Jesus. Jesus has prepared fellowship with coals of fire and fish, and he tells them to come and dine. And Jesus has them to remember that this is the resurrection from the past. But here is where I need to go. Here are our points of significance. Here, Russell, is where the rubber meets the road. In verse 15, so when they had dined, after they had eaten, Jesus said, and I just want to stop there for a moment. He turns his attention to Peter. Now, I want you and I to put ourselves in Jesus' position. Here is somebody who told me they got my back. Here is somebody who said, no matter where you go, I'll die. Where I'll go down with you. You ever had some folks like that? That, that when it's thick, they, they with you. Yeah. But when it's thin, yeah. you're looking for them and they ain't nowhere to be found. <laughs> Jesus is in this position with Peter. Come on. Come on. And so I can imagine, beloved, that it had to take Jesus, Jodina, and not me because I would have told Peter about his Tynergy fake self. <laughs> you ain't going to help me preach this. I would have told Peter, where was you? When they were slapping me in my face. Where was you when they punched me and they put a crown of thorns? Why did you turn your back and follow me like you did? I would have gave him the business. You would have too. You had some folks let you down? You ever been waiting on them? And they don't seem like they ever going to show up. You start talking. Oh, <laughs> I don't know how long Pastor going to be now. I've been waiting here for one minute. He should have been here for five minutes. Got me sitting up in here thinking he's somebody. I told him I'd be him here something. Come on, preacher. Are you, are you, are you? I would have gave Peter the business. First of all, Robbie, too, I would tell him what I really thought about it. I need to stay here for a moment because this is us. Come on, God. That Jesus doesn't even bring up his past, Bob. Amen. Amen. You denied me three times. You said you was going to be with me through thick and thin. It got thin and you thick and left. <laughs> We would have gave him a business. Yes. Told him about himself. Watch it. I wouldn't even have fed him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. Jesus don't cook. <laughs> don't miss this. <laughs> he don't cook in something to eat. <laughs> Sisters, can I holler at y'all? Y'all know where them brothers mess up. Y'all ain't cooking nothing. <laughs> Donald's is open. <laughs> Jesus even cooked for him. <laughs> 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 
So when they had dined, point number one, this is a demonstration to follow. Jesus said to Simon, you no good, low down, too faithful, no time in my hand. Help that I ever had, and you know what? No. no. Jesus says to him, Son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Let me handle that first, but let me go to the script. Jesus could have dealt with and talked with Peter a lot differently. Yes, yes. Since it was Peter who denied Jesus three times, that would have left some scars. Mm. It was Peter who said, Though everyone else may turn away from you, I never will. Amen. Jesus could have begun like this. He could have given Peter a cold shoulder. Yeah. He could have given Peter the silent treatment. You know how it is when somebody make you mad? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you roll your eyes? You roll your eyes at him? Man, not say nothing to me. What? Huh? What'd you say? I thought not. That's right. <laughs> he could have asked Peter, what happened to you? With all those empty promises. He could have, I said it before, I'll say it again, because we roll our eyes at some folks. He could have rolled his eyes at Peter and just ignored him without saying a word to Peter. And would you know that Jesus was mad and you would know that Jesus is angry and you would know that Jesus is upset with him. He could have said to Peter, I don't trust you anymore. Look what happened the last time. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Someone listen to this. And watching this video cast is still bound and tied up in knots because of unforgiveness from someone Come who on, hurt Reverend. them in the past. Come on, Reverend. Here is a good demonstration to follow that whoever and whenever someone hurt you in the past, it's time to let it go. Come on now. We need to set somebody free. You need to be and I need to be resurrected from my past. And if I hurt somebody in the past and I haven't gone back to them, God knows I need to make a phone call and say I'm sorry. Hallelujah. This is a demonstration to follow. You don't need to throw back on what they did to you. You don't have to call a roll. And so the text teaches me not only that, watch this church, that Jesus doesn't even have to tell Peter how much he loves him. It's not in the text. Because Peter knows how much he already loves him. That's a footnote for somebody. I don't have to wear love on my sleeve and have a bumper sticker to tell you how much I love you. I'd rather show you how much I love you than to tell you I love you and I really don't. Come on now. Does it in the text? He asked Peter, how much do you love me? So listening and watching on the video cast, please set somebody free today and forgive them. Amen. Resurrect them from their past. Yes, yes, yes. The, listen, I, I want to drop this because some folks, well, you don't know what I've been through, and I don't. And Jesus and I this morning are saying from this text, he's not denying the reality of the pain that hurts you. Come on. Yeah. There's no question we get hurt, and there's pain involved. But what he is saying to us, there's a proper way to deal with it. That's right. Amen. Come on. It's a proper way to handle it. Anyone who is unwilling to forgive shows that they do not appreciate what they have been forgiven from. Mm. Forgiveness is an act of faith. By forgiving another, you are trusting God and his ability to handle justice on your behalf. That's right. Come so on. this morning, we need to set somebody free. We need to heal somebody. Tell them, yes, I forgive you. All is well. Jesus says in this first, do you love me more than these? And I thought for a moment, Dr. Russell, who is he talking about these? That crossed my finite mind for a moment and said, these, Jay Williams, who is Jesus talking about more than these? Now, what was interesting is in the text as I digress, is, is that the disciples are not privy to this conversation. Mm. He's only talking to Peter. And Jesus won't tell everybody your business. That's what, come on, brother. You call me by myself, so NABF don't know what you have to do that. Maybe you have the business. 
I'm so glad he's not a crowd talker. Let me get a ball on and yell. Don feels it. He calls him individually. And he'll deal with you one-on-one -on -one about your sin and your sorrow that you're dealing with. Whatever it is, it's your business and it's his business. Amen. But who are these? You know they say, who is them? <laughs> they say, who them be? <laughs> who are they? You know who Jesus is talking about? He's asking him, do you love me more than them fish? Uh -huh. mm. Come on, preacher. Wow. Come on, Come on, sir. Do you love me more than them fish? Come on. Come on. Let me try this out. Do you love me more than them fish? Right. Amen. <laughs> and what he's really saying is, do you love me more than your secular occupation? Come on. Where you're just concerned with material food and yeah. material things and material value and your car and your house. Do you love me more than these fish? Preach it. Preach it. Preach it. Preach it. So watch this. Jesus is not in the hurt business. Amen. He's speaking to Peter's heart. This is a heart business. He doesn't want Peter to be handcuffed and shackled from his past. But he's interested in how Peter can grow from his past. Jesus brings love into the air because on his side, it is clear to Peter that Jesus loved him, but does Peter love him more than these fish or his occupation? Point number next, I gotta hasten. There's a repetitive question to answer. Now, 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 Jesus asked Peter the same question three times. Now I'd be irritated, irritated, agitated, and ready to fight. <laughs> You know how we are, Nathan. Uh, no, I'm sorry. You know how I am. <laughs> I just caught him on my periphery. You know how we are. Don't make me say it again. Did you not hear me the first time? <laughs> Don't you hate repeating yourself? I do. Especially if I said it once, that ought to be good enough. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. I'm going to tell you one more time. Amen. <laughs> The old folks ain't do none of that. They just looked at you. Right. <laughs> and you just straight right on up. But Jesus talks three times. It would be on my last third. You see, if somebody had to tell me something three times. Can you imagine that telling somebody something three times? Once, okay. Second time, I bet you didn't hear me. But hold on. I'm not talking Spanish, Greek, or French here. Do you understand? I'm telling you. <laughs> Don't make me repeat myself. Amen. We do it with our children. We haven't done that when we were children. We do it to our children. One of the worst things you have is someone repeat themselves when they are crystal clear. Mm. You heard the first time. So watch how this works out. It is, it is believed that Jesus said to Peter three times this repetitive question because Peter denied him three times. It's also believed that Jesus is using the stronger sense of love and Peter is using the weaker sense of love. So when Jesus says, do you love me, Peter? Peter says, yeah, you know I love you. Jesus senses that this is a, a superficial love and it's not real. Amen. Mm. It's more of a religious love. Mm. Come on, Reverend. And Jesus is into a relationship of love. That's right. You just say it because I'm asking you at this moment. But the reality is, do you love me in a relationship and not in... Oh, I feel like Come on. About duty. Sometimes, watch this, you have to ask the same question several times before the answer uh, and the truth comes forward. I'm going to work with this one. Watch this. You ever ask someone, you see it on their face. Yeah. Something's wrong. Yeah. yeah. Come on. And you say to them, are you all right? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me ask you again. Are you all right? Really? <laughs> no. Are you all right? Seriously. And then finally, they give you something like, "Well, my family's all right." We, you know. One more again. No. Let me ask you for the last time. I'm asking you, are you all right? And all of a sudden, the floodgates open. 
Sometimes Martin Reed, I wish I had asked that many times. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, you all that, right? <laughs> <laughs> but if you gonna stop telling me you ain't all right, hello? I do have somewhere I'm trying to get to. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not until you keep asking them, and finally they tell you, no, you know what, you have a minute, I'm not all right. Yeah. And so with the repetitive questioning that Jesus is asking Peter, the answer he's listening for is the relational love that's necessary to satisfy his question. Amen. Come on. Off the note. Y'all remember the bracelets? WWJD? Yeah. 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 You know how many, how many of them were sold? Countless. Millions. Brilliant idea. And now all of a sudden on that, I can't find anyone with a WWJD bracelet. Come on. Can you? I, is, is, is it antiquated? Is, is old? Is archaic? Is prehistoric? Done with? We just carry it right here now. What would Jesus do? I thought of something, and there's not many entrepreneurs in the house. Maybe we should make a bracelet D Y L M. <laughs> Let me sit the ball. Maybe there ought to be a bracelet D Y L M. Yeah. Okay. Baby, that might sell. <laughs> Do you love me? Come on. Come on, really. No, yeah, ha, 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 yeah, yeah. Do you really love me? That's what I'm after, yeah. Or is it just a fad? Yeah. That you're just wearing it for the moment. Do you really love me? Listen. He's asking him how much, uh, not, can I get this straight? He's asking Peter, not how much do you love the church. That's right. He's not asking you how much you love your neighbor. He's not asking how much you love the pastor, the praise team, the chair, the carpet, the door, the window. He's asking him, do you love me? When someone loves you, they make a commitment to you. That's right. They will go all out to make sure that they respond to your need. Do you love me? Let me start in the house. When your spouse get on your last nerve, look Come at on. your bracelet. Come on. D-Y-L-M. <laughs> when your children are wreaking hell and havoc and won't listen to nothing you gotta say, you gotta repeat it six or seven times. D-Y-L-M. Do you love me? I was in Walmart. Y'all know how it is in Walmart. I'll tell you, I'm serious now. When I got across the house, D. Marshall, this happened to me. I was looking there listening. Uh, a child was telling a parent what to do. Yeah. And the parent was asking Come the on. child to do something. I've never heard of such madness. <laughs> asking them to do something. <laughs> and the child screaming back, no, I need you to go pick up what I asked you to get. <laughs> <laughs> Do you love me? D-Y-L-M. When a supervisor or the boss at work is out of control and life is miserable, D-Y-L-M. Mm. All right, let me hit my pet peeve. On the road when somebody cut me off and I give them my IQ. Do you love me? only is there a demonstration to follow, a repetitive question to answer. Here's number last, and I'm going. It's a work to do. It's a work to do. Not only in 16 did he say, do you love me, Simon, uh, son of Jonas? Love us not me. He said, unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest I love you. He said unto him, feed my sheep. Notice the progression from lambs to sheep. That means all ages. Mm. We got to love everybody according to the way Christ loves us. That's right. Here's number last. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said the third time, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Lord, you know all things. Thou knowest I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. Jesus not only forgives Peter, but he gives him a work to do. Yeah. Jesus wants Peter to feed and care for the sheep. Jesus doesn't call for pastors 
Come on. To entertain the sheep. Come on. To administrate the sheep. Come on, Reverend. To develop support groups for the sheep. Or to make the sheep feel better about themselves. We are told to feed the sheep. Now, let me go further. Thank Come you, somebody. Amen. If you think it's just in this pulpit, you're wrong. Because all, right. all, right. all of us pastor somebody. Yes. And every now and then, Nisi, I like mom daddy and I love mom daddy because she'll pastor me with a kind word and feed me with the word of God. And Barry will say something and Sean will say something, Derek will say something, all of you say something that makes the pastor feel as though he needs your help. Yes. We're all pastoring somebody. Amen. It's just not the pastor's job. We should be feeding each other encouragement. That's right. And strength and power to run. We ain't got time to be fighting each other. Come on, this is what I love about NABF. If it is a squabble, it's a small one, and God will settle that. But it's not like some other churches I've been in where they've been fighting for 50 years. Yes. And they still fight. Yes. Don't love the pastor. Pastor, don't love them. But here is different. The love is real. Everybody that has come and visited us has said to me, Baba, that the love in this place is so real and so thick, Amen. I felt like I belong. Come on. NABF is family. Amen. That's who we are. Amen. And we should take time to feed each other and love each other and hug on each other and walk with each other and talk with each other and keep each other encouraged. Amen. Life is hard by itself. D-Y-L-M. Then feed my sheep. Watch this and I gotta go. Number last, so, so watch this, I gotta take my shoes off. So watch this. So watch this. Watch this. Here comes the clothes. No, my feet don't hurt. And I cut the tail, I cut the nails earlier, man. I got no bodies, you gotta worry about it. I just felt like being free right now. Here comes the clothes, watch this. Don't judge yourself by your past. Come on. You don't live there anymore. Don't judge yourself by your past. You don't live there anymore. Amen. Here comes the clothes, Dr. Gelson. Watch this, Pop Jean. A story is told about an old Indian who attended a church service on Sunday morning. The preacher's message lacked real spiritual food, so he did a lot of shouting and pulpit pounding to cover up his lack of preparation. Come on. <laughs> Let me say it. Yeah, the preacher's message message lacked real spiritual food, so he did a lot of shouting and pulpit pounding to cover up his lack of preparation. In fact, as it sometimes says, he preached up quite a storm. <laughs> After the service, Arnett, someone asked the Indian, who, who was a Christian, what he thought about the minister's message. Thinking for a moment, he summed up his opinion in six words. High wind, big thunder, no rain. <laughs> All across America, people flock to churches. Many love their church in times of worship they enjoy, but many of those some are some people who are starving spiritually. They're having fun, but they are malnourished. The reason, high wind, big thunder, no rain, we must teach the truth of Scripture. It is God's truth that will set us free. Yeah. There are three things that I want to leave you with. Notice these are God's sheep and not ours. We are the building. Uh, we are the kingdom of God. The building isn't. Our church is an edifice where we come and praise Him. But we're to build up the household of God. Yeah. That reminder alone will stop much of the pettiness if there's any that will try to divide us. Come on. Number two, the sheep are not all the same. Come on, Reverend. He calls some lambs and other sheep. As we care for each other, we must understand that each person is unique and different. Our methods, our words, and our actions must be tailored to their situation. Some people can get handle a big steak. Others still need a bottle. And still others need the strange stuff. But whatever it is they need, we must be sure to feed each other Come on. the word and the law. Hallelujah. That means we're not only to feed them, but we're to care for them. It's not enough to simply recite Bible verses to each other. I don't know about a lot about livestock, but I do know this. There is more to taking care of these animals than just putting out feed and water. 
Right. They need help when they're having their calves. Yeah. They need medical help when they are sick. They need warmth when they are cold. They need attention when it's terribly hot. It was cold in here, right now it's perfect. Amen. They need protection from predators. It's not enough for us to go through the motions. We must get involved with each other if we're going to help each other grow. Don't judge yourself by your past. You don't live there anymore. There's a song that they say, and I'm done. God sent his only son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy our pardon. And if the grave is there to prove, Savior lives. Yeah. Our Savior lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Resurrection from your past. All of us have one. And I stopped to catch my breath. All of us have been delivered, Amen. resurrected from our past. Amen. 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 You mean to tell me God went and got someone? I just started my own self. Think about what you were about mm. Mm. and Come fill in the blanks. I'm so glad, Mom Thomas, that God looks beyond our faults. That's right. Looks beyond our failures. Yes. Looks beyond our flops and our flounders and yes. simply says, Here is my love. Yes. Skip, He loves us just the way we are. Yes. And thank God He found us. And we found him in the nick of time. Come on. Resurrection from your past. Your past is over with. There may be somebody here this morning. Eyes closed. Heads bowed. Jodine, I thought about this text. And you can take Peter's name out and put our name in. Ain't no question about it. That I wasn't thinking about Jesus when I was raising hell and, and living the worldly lifestyle. Amen. But I thought, Russell, that I was doing my own thing and, and I didn't care about church, God, Jesus, Holy Ghost, sanctified folk, justifiable folk, folks set free, healed and delivered. I could care less. All I want to do is get drunk and get hot. That's right. Come on. That's Rick. what I was living for. Come on, Rick. That was my past. But glory be to God. Lift he up. found me in the stupor of my life and resurrected me from my past. That's right. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I remember I turned my back on him. Was saved, sealed, and delivered. And I still told him no. Come on. But those of you who don't know, I was 30 minutes from dying. That's all they gave me. They called him. We had to tell the family, y'all start praying. And I promise God, if you watch this, resurrect me from this bed, I promise you. Come on, Reverend. I'll serve you. Come on, God. Yes, Lord. Tell The doctors and the nurses attending me said, something's going on in this room. How the blinds blow, Russell, when the windows aren't even open. One of the technicians took off and left. I'd be dead from my arm. I opened my eyes and told him, Lena, I know who it is. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. He came to resurrect me yeah. from my past. Amen. And now there is new life. Somebody here this morning, I know you've been hurt. And I know you hurt someone else. But when it pales to Jesus, we simply know this simple answer. It can be fixed. That's right. If Jesus forgave Peter, if Jesus forgave the disciples, if Jesus met the woman uh, Mary in the, in, at the tomb and told her to go tell, if Jesus resurrected them from their past, he can do the same for us right now. Amen. Your past doesn't define you. This is a right now moment. Well, pastor, you don't know what I do. It doesn't matter. Paul said, I was the chiefest of sinners consenting to murdering and stoning Christians to death. 
God resurrected him from his past. Moses slew an Egyptian and tried to bury him in the sand. God raised him from his past. And now Jesus wants to resurrect you from your past. Doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. Come meet me here at this altar. Amen. If you've never said yes to Jesus, please don't wait and say, Pastor, you know I'm only 18, I got time. No, you don't have any time. Amen. It doesn't matter if you're 18 or 88. Amen. You still need Jesus. Amen. Amen. He still loves you. And watch this. He ain't going to talk about what you did and where you've been. He never raised any of that with me. Not one time, Pop Gillison, did Jesus say to me, I told you don't go out there with them fools. Not one time did he say, put the weed down. Not one time did he say, put the liquor down. Not one time did he say, why are you chasing women like you do? Not one time. He just said, welcome home. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on. Just welcome home. Well, Pastor, I didn't have that kind of lifestyle. I know you didn't. And that's okay. I'm not giving license to it. I want you to know that I survived it because of the love of Christ. Amen. Because he resurrected me from my past. Amen. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Won't you meet me? They say that this is the most celebrated time of the church. And I believe it to be true because we're not here to beat anyone up. We're just simply here to offer Christ. That's right. And his love. Amen. Truth be told, I got so many skeletons, you wouldn't be able to bust the door open. You couldn't they just run you over. I can't, I don't have time to tell you everything that I've done. Thank God I won't do that. That's right. But he knows. And he still loves me. And he still loves you. If you've never said yes to him, and your family members have a, a, a relationship with Christ. And God forbid if God should call any of us home, because all of us have an expiration date, can you say, Pastor, I'll see them again? Mm, yes. 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 Can you say,